Hey guys and welcome to my new video on sex determination systems. Today I'm going to be talking about a past test question on sex determination and I'm going to be discussing a couple things about some of the other systems that we have in nature. So everyone knows that humans have XX and XY chromosomes. If you're a boy then you have XY chromosomes and if you're a girl you have XX chromosomes. And these chromosomes are are seen in mammals and some insects but there are other species of animals where we don't see those types of chromosomes and sometimes in other animals we don't even see the same system so for example we have the ZZZW system which is similar to our XXXY system but it's seen in birds fish reptiles moths and butterflies it's very important to be able to know which animals are found in these systems so that you can um, you can spot them in these questions if they were to to add the animals into those questions um, another system is called haplodiploidy and that's very specific to bees and ants I'm going to be doing another video after this one on haplodiploidy and just being able to walk you through that type of question so I'm not going to really really um, talk a lot about haplodiploidy but it just for now know that it's specific to bees and ants and another system is called the protonator system. I'm not going to talk on that um, now. Um, it doesn't pop up a lot in tests, but don't take my word for it, because it very well could. So know about it and know what you can, what type of animals are found in that system. All right. So now you can pause the video and give the question a read, and then we can start with it. All right. So hopefully you have done that and you've given it a read. So what they've given you, the information that they have given you in this, in this question is that they've told you that they've crossed two different types of moths, right? They've crossed a female that is, has dark wings and a male that has dark wings. And they've also told you about their progeny. They say that 100% of the males all have all dark wings and half of the females have light wings and the other half of the females have dark wings. So they've given you a lot of information about the, the P1 and the F1 offspring. They've also told you the type of animals involved here, which are moths. And they've given you some information about the alleles and which gene is in play here. So obviously if there's one gene, we always have two alleles involved with that gene. So they've actually told us that there's a loss of function mutation here involved in, in, this, in this gene. And it causes a light color for for wings and so now we know we're dealing with with a gene that causes coloring in wings and the first thing that i like to do is i always like to write down my symbols before i start because it helps me keep track of what i'm doing and my rule of thumb is that loss of function mutations are usually recessive don't take my word for it it's just it usually is, and we're not like genius, geniuses in genetics, so I don't think they expect, they don't go so far to, to make it so difficult that they're like, loss of function mutations are now all dominant and so forth, so on and so forth. So I'm, oh, okay, well, before I carry on, I just want to say like, think of yourself as a detective, and there's no real right way to start with a, comp a, 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 a question. It's just that you have a hunch, and now you need to, you need to follow that hunch and see if your hunch actually gets to the right answer at the end. So before we start, the whole purpose of this question is that they want to know how, how this cross gives off the offspring that it does. And we have to prove that our theory is the right theory. <laughs> All right, so I have written down my, my, two, my two symbols. I know that my gene is to, it has to do with wing color. And I said that my wild type allele has dark wings and then my recessive loss of function mutation allele causes light wings. Right, the other information that they're giving us is that that's my P1, a dark female crossed with a dark male. And they've also given me the other information about the F1. The male, oh, sorry, yeah, the males are 100% dark. And they have also said that 50% of the females are dark. And they have also said that 50% of the females 
are light. So I just wrote that down for myself to, get, to be able to visualize what they're telling me. Because if you have the question on the paper and you don't have it in front of you, then, you know, it's almost like your brain doesn't make that type of connection. So rather write it down for yourself so that you can carry on with the conversation. Um, so, or conversation or question, I should say. It's conversation in your own head, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, whatever you'd like to say. All right, so as we go on, they want to know, they want, you need to figure out how the progeny was made. So if you do, if you, if you think, first of all, this is going to be a very, very easy question, and I'm just going to use XX, XY symbols, and it's going to work out, I can tell you, you're going to have a bit of a problem. And I'm going to show you how you could go wrong if you were to not notice that this question has to do with moths. So if I had to use the normal XX, XY symbols, here's my female. They do say that it's a dark moth. So I know that one of my um, X chromosomes have to have the wild type dominant P plus allele. Let's not talk about the, the lady first. Let's go on to the ma man before I come back to her. You know that it's a dark male. So he has to have on his X chromosome because that's the only chromosome that carries the um, wing color allele has to also be P plus because he is dark and he has to express that phenotype. And obviously he has his Y chromosome because he is the heterogametic sex. And remember, heterogametic sex means he has two different sex chromosomes. The females are the homogametic sex, right? All right, so if we did that cross, oh, just to, just to um, reiterate, is remember they want, <laughs> they want to kind of have the, these types of offspring, right? They need the males to be 100% dark and they need the females to be half and half. Right, so just remember the reason why I made the female like um, homozygous for the P plus alleles is because you need to take the X from the female and then the Y from the male to create male offspring. Right, so if they tell me in this question that 100% of the males are dark, that both of these have to be P plus because if I had this one and it had the recessive allele p then one of the males would be um would be light and then my whole question is wrong just keeping in mind that this is still wrong i'm just showing you how it can get you confused and cause you to come to like a wall in your question if you if you're in a test situation all right so here is my cross right and this is my progeny that i get i get 100 percent dark um females and i get 100 percent dark males so this is the wall you end up not getting the progeny that they tell you in the question. So now you might stop and think, I'm like, okay, this is not right. How, why am I getting this wrong? I'm using the X, X and XY chromosomes. And the reason is because moths do not follow this particular pattern. They follow the ZZZW pattern. And you had to pick up early on in, in, the, in the test question that moths follow that system. So now let's try it with the ZZZW system. So I just want to point out that in humans, the females are XX and they are the homogenetic sex, but it's the other way around in the ZZZW system. Females are the heterogametic sex, they are ZW. So they said that the female is dark, so I have to give her the P plus allele. And the males are the homogenetic sex, so he is ZZ. And I'm just going to go, like, like I said, you have to, you have to go with your own, your, your gut feeling or your assumption of should this male be um, heterogametic or should he be, um, sorry, no, heterozygous or homozygous for these alleles. Now, in my head, I kind of look, looked forward in the, in, in the question and I thought, okay, to get this type of offspring, what should my um, alleles be? And I decided to try it first with the individual being um, homozy homozygous. So let's try the cross like that and see what we get. Okay, so that's obviously my female gametes and here's my male gametes. Just bear with me while I'm doing my Punnett square. I always like to make my work look pretty, so. And neat so I can see what I'm doing. 
Alright, so here's my first kid. I'm trying to write bigger because I realised I'm writing a bit small in my videos. Alright, here's my offspring. So let me just highlight my females. Here are my females. Uh, oh, yeah, the females are the, the heterogametic sex. And, oh, I want to use a darker color. And the males are the homogametic sex. It's really good if you use those words because then the, the demis or the lecturers think, wow, this guy's all, all girl, studied really hard, and look, he's using all these fancy words. Um, and it, in your explanation, you should actually use it. It, it. it does give you extra marks. And I think they will think that you're very, very smart. All right, so remember what I did in the previous video. When you're looking, when you're dealing with questions that have to do with sexual orientation, I think that's the right thing to say. No, I would say like probably the actual sex of the individual. Then we break up our ratios. So we look at the males alone, and then we look at the females alone. And when we're, when we're doing our ratios, I'm just going to write ratios over here. I'm going to specifically deal with my males first. So if we look at our males, we see that they both have the wild type allele and this other individual also has the wild type allele. So we know that 100% of them are going to be dark. And if we look at our females, let's do another category here. This one is going to be wild type and dominant and be have dark, dark wings, so half are going to be dark and this one is going to have light wings so the other half of the females are going to be light and this matches up with our F1 progeny so we have cracked the code and now we have figured out that the reason for this type of inheritance is because moths adhere to to the ZZ, ZY system of um, sex chromosomes that's number one what we have to explain. We also have to explain that the males are the homogametic sex. So they have, their sex chromosomes are exactly the same. They have Z and Z. And then the females are the heterogametic sex, meaning that they have one Z chromosome and one W chromosome. So, and remember all your, also all your genes on the Z chromosome are only expressed. Um, and not, not, no, well, there are, there are genes on the W chromosome just not a whole lot okay yeah and I mean you can also just obviously you've given off all your all your genotypes of the parents and the offspring and I guess you can just just hint and or not hint rather say that your light wing allele is the loss of function um, mutation allele and it's recessive and your dominant dark wings allele is um, is the wild type allele then you can also say that these, this gene is sex-linked as well because it is on their sex chromosomes. So that's all you really need to know. Um, it is important to know what animals uh, fall into the ZWZZ system. And it's important to know like how to spot it. So in a question, if they talk about a specific animal, make sure that you, you definitely pick up on what type of animal they're talking about and that it's that the sexes are swapped around. So like I said earlier, is that the males are ZZ and the females are Z, ZW. So yeah, that's all you need to know for sex determination systems. I will be doing my next video on haplodiploidy and I hope that sorts out any misunderstandings that you guys have had. Cool, have a nice day.